Hey, uh, good to see you all. Um, I'm going to be talking about deploying Cloud Foundry services to OpenStack using the Apache Brooklyn service broker. My name's uh, Robert Moss. I work for CloudSoft. So why use Apache Brooklyn uh, to do this? Well, Apache Brooklyn allows you to uh, model, deploy, and manage services. And it does this using a blueprinting mechanism. So you can declaratively uh, specify what your service should look like. Um, you can compose um, blueprints either using supported components that are part of the um, Brooklyn ecosystem already or uh, indeed write your own. Um, Brooklyn automatically configures uh, the components uh, and wires them up. Um, so if it's um, a service that has multiple machines, they need wiring up, it'll take care of that for you. It'll also monitor key metrics about the service um, and perform policy-based management. So you can have confidence that while the service is running, um, it's, it's going to be taken care of rather than just deploy and forget about the service. So the way that we uh, bring these services into Cloud Foundry is with the Apache Brooklyn Service Broker. And that allows us to create and deploy Brooklyn managed services using the same blueprints um, that are stored in Brooklyn's catalog, um, but slightly augmented with a, a syntax that the uh, service broker understands. So one of the key abstractions in Brooklyn is a location. Uh, this is um, the way that Brooklyn uh, irons out many of the differences between uh, different clouds. Um, Usually these uh, different cloud locations, um, the, the provisioning tasks will be carried out by uh, Apache J clouds behind the scenes. Um, you can configure up the locations uh, to include a wide range of um, uh, configuration properties such as images and machine specs. So this is what setting up a location looks like. It's very simple YAML. Um, this is in fact a, a Brooklyn uh, BOM file, which uh, is just the Brooklyn object model. It uh, describes items that should go into Brooklyn's catalog. So in this case, we've got um, an open stack location. So you can see from the item type that it's a location. Um, the driver that it's using is a JCloud driver for OpenStack Nova. And it's, uh, it's got three basic uh, configuration properties there, an endpoint, um, an identity using the tenant and username for OpenStack, and a credential. And then some further configuration that you might want to include uh, for this location. So some of these additional configurations could be the image ID that you might want to deploy the software using, uh, the hardware types, so that's the flavors. Um, you might want to set the um, users that will uh, be used to log into the, to the image, uh, any floating IPs, and then some further templating options, such as any networks that you might have configured, um, floating IP pools, um, and security groups or key pairs. So once you've got the, uh, the BOM file and you want to add it to Brooklyn, it's just a simple BR catalog add and then the name of the file. So that gets, that gets your location into Brooklyn. So you can now use that as the deployment location for any of your blueprints that you might want to model your service using. So how do we go about modeling a service? Well, it's very similar to setting up the location. Again, it's a catalog item. Um, this is a very special catalog item because it contains um, a section called broker.config. And that means that uh, the uh, service broker will be able to read part of uh, this blueprint and uh, formulate its uh, catalog items, so the, 
the plans of the service that might be required. Um, so much of the metadata here uh, is picked up by the service broker and it creates the, the catalog according to the uh, Cloud Foundry um, service broker API, soon to be the um, open service broker API. Um, and the way that uh, plans work in these blueprints is um, the plan config section defines how you would like the service to be configured differently for the different plans that you might set up. So we'll, we'll take a look at that in a minute. So I mentioned that there are some supported components in the, um, in the Brooklyn ecosystem that you might want to um, fill out that, uh, that services block at the bottom. So if you're, if you're looking for a, a kind of search type service, you, you might use Apache Solar or Elasticsearch. If you need a relational database, MariaDB, MySQL, Postgres, or if you're doing um, messaging, perhaps Apache Cupid or Apache Kafka, ActiveMQ or RabbitMQ. Um, there's various uh, NoSQL um, solutions available as well, such as uh, Apache Cassandra, Apache CouchDB, Redis, React, Couchbase, MongoDB, and others as well. I've got Apache Storm, Apache Zookeeper, and Bind listed there as well. Um, at blueprints.cloudsoft.io, we've got um, 60 plus blueprints um, that can be used. So if we're going to compose uh, a blueprint from uh, these supported components, then we just need to set the service type um, to the namespace and uh, type that's included in the, in the component and then fill out that uh, broker config plans section with the particular config that you want for the plan. So in this case, we've got a clustered service and we want to set the initial size of the cluster to three. And that's done with the uh, config key there, uh, cluster.initial.size. So you can see this is a, a MongoDB replica set service. Or you can uh, compose your own blueprints as well. So uh, there's a particular component called a vanilla software process where its config keys allow you to specify the launch commands or the check running or stop commands that will be used while the service is running. And these are simply bash commands. Um, we've also got uh, sensors and effectors that are key abstractions within Brooklyn as well. And uh, that allows you to monitor what's going on uh, in the service. And again, these are set up um, typically using SSH commands. So the sensors will be continually running the SSH command to, to watch what's going on in the service. Uh, or the effector might run a command to change it in some way. So once we're ready to deploy, um, we need to first import the catalog into Cloud Foundry. And the way that this is done is the Apache Brooklyn service broker queries Brooklyn for, um, for Brooklyn's catalog. And then it creates its own catalog based on those. Um, it uses only the catalog items that have that um, broker.metadata uh, field in it. And uh, this is done every time a service broker, uh, create service broker command is issued or update service broker. Um, the service broker itself can be configured with a default, uh, sorry, a default deployment location, such as the, um, the location that we created earlier uh, using OpenStack. And um, this is very simply done by setting an environment variable but if you wanted to have individual plans that deploy to different target locations, you could also specify that within the plan metadata. So these Cloud Foundry commands should be fairly familiar to, 
most people. Um, once you've created the service broker, uh, you can have a look at the, the access of all of the plans that have been imported and enable those uh, particular services to the marketplaces of the different uh, orgs uh, within Cloud Foundry. So once we're ready to create a service, we issue the create service command uh, using the standard syntax, uh, CF create service with the service name, plan, and instance name. And when this happens, the broker looks up the relevant catalog item and it reads that uh, broker.config section to get the plan details. Um, it then uh, generates a new blueprint um, that's specifically configured with the config section from that, um, from, from that plan and, uh, and fills in the location. This generated blueprint is then sent to Brooklyn uh, for it to deploy to the location specified. The state of the broker is stored in Brooklyn um, in a particular entity called uh, the repository. We'll talk a little bit about entities in a moment. Um, this simply stores the mapping between the, um, the Cloud Foundry ID and the Brooklyn ID uh, so that the broker can um, query the state of the particular running service uh, at any point during uh, asynchronous provisioning or update. Once the service has been created, uh, we can do a CF bind service to bind it to the application and then restage to ensure that the environment variables are updated with the uh, credentials that are passed back from the broker. So to reiterate, the broker uh, queries Brooklyn uh, during bind uh, to get all of the sensors that are, um, that are monitoring the service at that particular time and it sends a snapshot of those sensors uh, within a credentials block and that sends it back to, the, uh, to Cloud Foundry uh, to populate the VCAP services variable. Um, you can specify within the uh, broker.config section, if you like, um, a whitelist or a blacklist to make sure that certain uh, sensors are not sent back uh, in the credentials object as well. So on to management. After all, this is one of the key reasons for using Apache Brooklyn. Um, I just want to explain a couple of uh, key abstractions. Uh, the main abstraction that we use is called an entity, uh, which just represents a particular resource under management, whether that's a particular virtual machine or a software process. Uh, these are arranged in a hierarchical fashion, and they have events and operations with processing logic. Um, they also have a life cycle, such as start, stop, and these are tracked with tasks, and that allows operators to, uh, to look inside the service and, and see how it's been uh, processing up to this point. So I mentioned sensors earlier. Um, sensors monitor the state of a service, and these are typically done with SSH commands defined in the blueprint, as we saw earlier. And they can run periodically or indeed just once. And they're often used to expose endpoints or credentials of the service, as well as any other key metrics. Effectors, they change the state of the service. So uh, again, using an SSH command um, that is defined in the blueprint, it will uh, run whenever it's triggered. And these could be used, for instance, to scale out clustered services by adding nodes or change the service in some way. And policies, so policy-based management allows you to combine the power of the sensors and effectors 
to act automatically. So you could, for instance, monitor for failure within the application and then effect recovery. Or you might want to monitor for usage and then auto-scale the service. So let's take a closer look at the auto-scaler policy. This increases or decreases the size uh, of a resizable entity, such as a cluster. And it does this based on uh, an aggregate sense of value. Um, the current size of the entity um, is monitored to check if it's between uh, an upper bound and a lower bound. And if it uh, goes out with this, um, the effector will automatically uh, be triggered to, uh, to correct this. So again, this is just simple YAML that's put into the blueprint um, using a Brooklyn policies section. And it's configured with uh, a metric uh, such as the sensor name and uh, given those high or low uh, watermarks. So if you want to, uh, as an operator, uh, look deeper into the service, you might want to use the uh, BR command line tool. And uh, to, to do this, you might want to uh, list all of the services that Brooklyn's managing at that time with BR app, uh, or look closely at it by specifying its name, or any of the entities, sensors, or uh, a particular entity. As well as all of this, uh, CloudSoft provides a, uh, a UI around all of these components, which we call CloudSoft Service Broker. This allows operators uh, to add services uh, without using the command line. So a nice uh, UI there um, for, for those that are not so comfortable uh, with the uh, CLI. Um, but it does more than just that. It, it also talks to Cloud Foundry uh, to sort of give a, um, a richer user experience. So after adding services, you can then control the visibility using the UI uh, or display the sensor values that are coming in uh, for that service. Um, and you can also uh, use it to add services that, that use a particular blueprint uh, for connecting to pre-existing databases. So this is a, a particular blueprint that we created. And on the UI, it will fill in the configuration um, of, of that blueprint using the user input to allow them to connect to a pre-existing database. So typically, um, in Cloud Foundry, people have been using user-provided services for this task. But uh, that means that the um, the user has to get the credentials from operations uh, rather than getting a new uh, user uh, on demand. Uh, and uh, this is not so good if, uh, if you've got uh, compliance to, uh, to do. So if you want to have a blueprint that will uh, connect to that pre-existing database and also happen in a self-service way, then this blueprint's Pretty good for that. So just to reiterate, uh, Brooklyn can easily deploy services to OpenStack um, modeled using the blueprint syntax. Um, Apache Brooklyn Service Broker makes it simple to add services to Cloud Foundry. Again, modeled using an augmented form of the blueprint. And Apache Brooklyn can autonomically manage these services. So what I mean by that is a kind of self-healing uh, uh, kind of automation that uses the sensors and effectors combined uh, using policies. And uh, the CloudSoft Service Broker wraps all of this together to provide Cloud Foundry operators with a simple interface. Um, and we provide enterprise support for that too. So that's the that's all, folks. I've
got the link here if you're interested in the, uh, the service broker. But uh, other than that, happy to take questions. So this will see whether you were paying attention to Jeff's talk um, <laughs> or not. Um, no, joking aside, um, I really like what those guys are doing with uh, Fissile and Furnace and creating what you might call a cloud native cloud foundry, i.e. cloud foundry running on Kubernetes, which is entirely legit in my view. Um, although I nearly got thrown out of a cloud foundry pivotal meeting in, um, in uh, China for saying that a few months ago. But anyway, that's by the by. Um, but in that scenario, one of the things that Jeff did talk about right at the end was the challenge of handling the ecosystem of services. So in other words, the services that you're talking about here. Now, obviously I work for CloudSoft, so I have some knowledge of, of what you're talking about, but would it make sense to uh, use the service broker to then deploy uh, services onto Kubernetes itself? As, yes. a, as a location, in other words. Yes, I think so. Um, we certainly have a location that we've been working on in CloudSoft uh, for deploying to Kubernetes, and and I think that that could also, you you know, you could, for instance, have your uh, Kubernetes running in OpenStack, and then uh, configure the the location uh, to target that and and deploy services there as well. I don't think it has to run on OpenStack, by the way, but uh, <laughs> they'll probably call security at that point. <laughs> Thanks. I'm a newbie in Cloud Foundry, so <laughs> forget, <laughs> forgive me, the question is not very interesting. Um, I reckon that uh, the service broker will eventually align to the open service broker API. Yeah, That's right, yeah. yeah. So the, the open service broker API is uh, currently developing um, the, the first spec uh, to be released, but they're basing it um, off the current uh, Cloud Foundry spec, so it's it's just a an incremental um, release when it when it comes out. So it sh it should align very simply. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>